How do we connect memories with emotion that then influences our actions? That's the topic I'd like to explore today. And it's the reason why I called the episode past emotion equals present action. And it's <laughs> interesting, the thing that, that inspired it, um, one was a nursery rhyme and the other one was a visit to a garden centre. So I shall explain more as we go. Um, and the nursery rhyme was the one about Dr. Foster. So I don't know if you remember it uh, as clearly as I do. It obviously made an impression on me as a child. Dr. Foster went to Gloucester in a shower of rain. He stepped in a puddle right up to his middle and he never went there again. So essentially what the nursery rhyme is telling us is that because of one bad experience, Dr. Foster decided never to go to Gloucester again. Now, the reason for mentioning my visit to a garden centre is there was a kind of similarity to it. And I love the way that nursery rhymes are such delicious microcosms of truth. They express something about human behaviour. There's always some story inside it which we can connect with and obviously that's the reason why nursery rhymes last and last and last you know they, uh, they've been around many of them have been around for hundreds of years so my connection with the eponymous Dr Foster was that um, in the midst of the storms that were raging across the UK earlier this year um, there was a lull in in the storms and I think it was actually a, a kind of lull in between two storms and Anton and I drove to a garden centre at a place called Lionshall. Um, I think that's how you say it. I might have got that wrong but still relatively new to this area but you know forgive me if I if I did. Um, so there's this nursery at Lionshall and on the way there, the roads were quite bad. Um, they were There were a couple of areas that were really quite seriously flooded. And although we've got a, a four by four, because that is essential with living around here, you can't get up the roads in winter without one. Um, you know, getting through those puddles uh, or flooded bits of road was quite, um, tricky. It was a little kind of moment of like, are we going to make it? Uh, or is the water going to come in the exhaust pipe and mess up the engine? Um, so there were flooded roads and, um, and the weather kind of was, although there was a lull in the storm, you could still, you could kind of feel the energy, uh, you know, you could feel the kind of like the rage was still you know heavy in the sky and and it added a certain kind of frizz on to the journey over there it's only i don't know 25 30 minutes drive um and then when we got to the garden center the winds started up again and as many garden centres have. There was a kind of area outside and there was a part that had, um, you know, sort of plastic kind of sheeting over the top of it and it was really like flapping in the wind and you could hear, you know, some of the kind of windows beginning to rattle and the plants that were outside, the, the kind of young trees were really like blowing in the wind even though they were in a, a kind of courtyardy area. So the the storm was really beginning to be felt again. And I suddenly felt really, really uncomfortable. And I think I'd been feeling quite uncomfortable on the way over there. But the thing that I wanted to buy, whatever that was, was greater than the fear of being out on the road in the, the kind of lull between the two storms. But when the next storm kind of started making its presence felt while we were there it made me feel really uncomfortable 
and I suddenly realised that obviously we had to drive back and it's a primal fear of being physically unsafe, you know, being away from home, having to drive along roads which are really quite rural. Um, we already knew some of the roads were flooded, how much worse were they going to be, the rain started up again and basically I said we've got to go and we left. I don't think we even bought anything actually um, and we left and obviously we made it home safely and it was fine and it was a relief to be back here because there is something about the geography of this landscape where the house is which means that we're kind of sat nestled inside the valley and while the storms raged the trees you know sort of blew you know up in the the woods um that were kind of up in the hills behind us down in the valley in our little nook um we could barely feel it so it felt extra safe to me so the the contrast between being at home and being out was quite stark and so the other day um I wanted to go to a garden centre. We're now in spring, almost kind of uh, sort of mid-spring. I'm, I'm recording this uh, episode in April, even though you might be listening to it in May uh, or later. Um, and I wanted to go to a garden centre. I wanted to get some potting compost and I wanted to get some... Uh, baby plants um, for the um, veg beds etc partly because my experiment with uh, growing plants from seeds hasn't quite worked out but that's a whole other story um, and while Lionshaw is the nearest garden centre to us I noticed that I was really resisting going to it and um and I was basically saying to Anton, mm, I, well, I don't think it's that good. And he, <laughs> he was asking why I was saying that. And, and I suddenly realised that actually my reaction rather than response, my reaction to the suggestion that I should go over to Lionshaw was based on my memory of there being a sense of fear attached to that place. So my past emotion was driving my present action just as it did for Dr Foster and his refusal to go to Gloucester ever again because he thought that he was always going to have a bad experience when he went even though, let's face it, the likelihood of him standing in a puddle up to his middle you know, it's unlikely to happen again. Just as for me, it's unlikely that there's going to be a bad storm in the middle of April, um, you know, in the uh, Welsh countryside. So if it is in Wales, it might not be. It might be in England. I really, really need to get to know this area better. But anyway, let's move on from that. Um, but essentially, we do this all the time. We attach these uh, emotions to experiences and it drives present action and it's partly because of our reticular activating system which is something I've talked about quite a lot on the podcast before so the the RAS or the reticular activating system it's constantly looking for patterns that are connected to previous thoughts and experiences and it's through these patterns that the RAS enables us to filter out the stuff that we're not interested in and filter in the stuff that we are interested in. So my RAS was telling me, um, here's some evidence that you don't like that place called Lionshall Nursery because you had a bad experience, inverted commas, um, when you were there before. So if as a child, for example, you had a teacher who had a red handbag uh, or you had a teacher who had a big beard and 
that teacher was mean to you or that teacher was super kind to you, then you might subconsciously associate red handbags or big beards with being scared or with being really happy. And just sort of just taking note of the things that we have a response to or a reaction to can be really interesting when you start to kind of dig in and see, okay, well, what is driving that? Um, and we can see it playing out really strongly with certain scents too, scents as in S-C-E-N-T-S, because our olfactory memory is so powerful. So one of the th things that I've uh, experienced, and I can't remember if I've shared this here before, but um, after my mother died, her name was Vivian, after Vivian died, um, I would quite often smell cigarette smoke because my mother smoked and she smoked all my life. And I can smell it at times and it really feels like she's here. Now, often we'd sort of think about the smell of cigarette smoke as being something that's kind of horrible, a bit yucky. But for me, it's redolent of my mother. And so, and so I have this, um, uh, this very kind of warm sort of loving experience as well when I, I smell it and it reminds me of her. Um, and again, that's, that's my, you know, that's my memory, um, playing with, uh, with my experience and the challenge around that for me was that because I associated cigarettes with love, with the love of my parents and with receiving love from my parents, um, as a younger adult, I used to smoke. So I was, I was making a connection between love and smoking, which sounds bizarre, but, um, but it was there. That was the truth of it. So working with clients, um, we can see these associated memories. They come up again and again and and we can see how they influence our current reality. So some of the examples that um, that have come up um, have been things like um, there might be someone at work who really irritates you, but no one else seems quite as bothered by them. Or there might be a place that you really hate going to, but others don't seem to mind. Or there might be the feel of certain clothing that makes you immediately uncomfortable, but someone else would happily wear it. And, and these are often things where we can't see a direct connection with something else. So in terms of that person at work, um, you know, of course, we don't get on with everyone that we work with, you know, that's absolutely fine. But if there's something sitting underneath it, something that really gets to you about them, it can be really interesting work to explore, mm, what am I associating with that person from my past that's influencing the way that I feel about them? How is my past emotion influencing my present action? Same with a place. There might be a place that you really hate going to or, or a place that makes you feel really uncomfortable but others don't seem to mind and you can't, you can't see an, an immediate reason why you wouldn't like going there. What is it that you're associating with it? What is it that you're, that's in that environment or that you're connecting with that environment that is associated with an emotional memory that is being attached to this place in the present. Um, and again, clothing, you know, clothing, the feel of things. Um, 
certainly from you know if, oh, I mean I certainly remember you know as a child there were certain um, dresses that I really didn't like wearing and um, you know it could be that there was something that you had to wear whenever you um, had to go somewhere that you didn't particularly enjoy going to uh, maybe it was a, a relative's house and it was boring or maybe it was um, going to school and and you weren't sort of you didn't like your teacher at the time or whatever it might be there might be a feel of clothing that you have now which sparks activates that emotional memory and that that em then influences present action and the reason why doing this work is useful, of course, is that once we identify the association that we're making, it may be possible to move forward from it, or at least to rationalise what is happening for you in that time. Now, with some of those things, it really doesn't matter, of course, you know, if it's a piece of clothing, well, just don't wear it, wear something else. But if it's someone at work who you have to work closely with and and that is conflicting with you in some way, then understanding what that association is could be really helpful because it could just help you find a way to reframe that relationship that you have and therefore work more easily with that person without having to either suppress um, something that you're feeling or or um, feel frustrated about having to, to work with them. Um, now, of course, if the association is connected with trauma of any kind, then it may be necessary to seek expert support. Um, you know, and if it's if it's trauma um, that requires, you know, really kind of deep nurturing, then, you know, obviously always the advice is to go and seek, you know, a counsellor. Um, if it's something which you feel it is possible to work with um, in a in a kind of, you know, in a way that feels safe, um, with a coach then that would be working with somebody like me but always the guidance is to go gently always regardless of what you're doing um, and also to remember that sometimes it can be something relatively minor that ends up limiting us in some way so like me in the garden center um, I really needed to get the compost for our plants because without it I wouldn't have been able to do the next bit of planting that I wanted to do. So I needed to go to a garden centre and I chose to go to Lionshaw and I consciously made the decision to really enjoy the drive it is a beautiful route and I knew there wasn't going to be any flooding and I really consciously made the effort to see the place and to to see the people who work there to see the effort that they have put in to the place that they have created um, rather than having my vision of what I was seeing filtered by my fear of the wild storm that was raging before. So a wonderful question here can be, what are the things that you notice could be influencing choices that you make in your day-to-day -day life? And from there, how might turning towards those things and seeing what filter has been in place for you, how might that benefit you? So, as ever, my darlings, 
May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be well. May you live with ease. And if there is anything that we've covered today that you'd like to get some expert guidance on, then please do reach out to me. You can always have a free one-to-one -one discovery call with me just to explore how coaching could support you. And there may be something else entirely that is going on in your life right now that you would like somebody to walk beside you as you manage it. And I would be delighted to walk beside you. All right, my loves, take care and I send you a hug and a wave.